Hello, welcome to Before the Vow. Today I want to talk about the main reason why I traveled to abroad. I know a lot of things were said behind me after I traveled that pastors were advising me to quit my marriage and all that. I'm not a child for someone to just tell me to quit my marriage whereby the person is already married and even if they have their own issues they are still living together so why would i just listen to somebody and say i'm abandoning my home all in the name of travel when i resigned from my workplace that was six years into marriage and we have not lived together before apart from maternity leaves that i was spending about a month or two i didn't really enjoy my resignation because i acted under duress my ex-husband was pushing me to resign due to the issue that was going up in the workplace if my marriage had failed whilst i was working i would have blamed myself because people, i might think that i was following money at the expense of my marriage so coming to live together under the same roof with the children it was like you know i'm coming to really marry at the initial stage of our living together it was like i was going through you know some emotional pain that because i didn't really resign from my own heart so i wasn't happy but he told me i have done a lot during my six years in marriage so he also wants to take over and he can take care of me take care of my children and even my mother because she was also living with us at that time during the time that i resigned he had a female friend that she was running adverts at his station i didn't know much about her all that i knew was she was running her advert but she decided to get very close to the family because of the way her business was running i sorry to be like with a good motive so i also got closer to her but her attitude changed when she wanted to meet him that is my ex-husband alone to give him some money because everywhere that he goes he goes with me but that particular night it was like suddenly he had issues with me where i didn't even know where the issues were coming from so that he could leave home all by himself the next morning he got home around 1 a.m or so and woke me up in the morning and showed me the money that this woman has given him money i wasn't happy but i had to you know say okay because i didn't know why he had to leave that night without even going with me and after he came back he was in talking terms with me i decided to from that moment start studying the woman see her attitude towards me and my family I saw she wasn't, you know, clicking with me anymore. Everything that she says, he will listen. So to the extent of trying to cast insinuations, saying a whole lot of things about me to him that he believed. After we moved from one house to the other, that is when we started to establish our own media school. During the time that we were preparing, we met a couple from the US of A the man was sick but he was a prophet and the woman too was a prophetess but the woman wasn't a Ghanaian and it's a Senegalese suddenly they liked us and they started prophesying to us everything that they said came to pass she told us that we will have issues in our marriage in 2017 that time we, it was just January 2017 then we said oh these people you are you know, rich people in Ghana I see you traveling all over the world I see your name being mentioned all over but there is a challenge a woman will come and disturb you with money instantly it clicked me that it's going to be that woman because that time she has showed a whole lot of interest in my family that she has the money and she wants to support my family and you know from that time she started playing a whole lot of jealousy on me and i told my ex-husband that i don't want you to collect her money anymore let us be let us live our life we are not in competition with anybody it was like i have said something that i shouldn't have said from that time the two of them started fighting me because if the person that i was married to was one with me easily he could tell the woman to know her limits the fact that you are giving money to me doesn't mean that you should disrespect my wife. But he, on the other way around, was supporting her to disrespect me. And it got very worse. She has gotten the support of the family too. So it was like one against all. 
nobody could speak for me it was like i was lost in the middle of nowhere and everybody thought that i was the bad one i am disturbing him i'm not giving him a peace of mind all in the name of what because i have asked him to stop collecting money from the woman and the woman will come back and say a lot about me and sometimes it's it's funny that how could you even believe such a thing she says just anything and he believes you know perfectly well that what she's saying is a lie she would even come and say that because of me the boyfriend is gone and everybody would just be lambashing me that i should speak to the boyfriend i know i know nothing about the boyfriend leaving later on the boyfriend will come back and say that she deleted you know uh, my ex-husband's number from his phone so that he could not be able to trace him and they le he left because of their own issues so i was vindicated i knew that she was lying against me just to create a whole lot of issues when i got pregnant he wasn't happy about it initially all my children he wasn't apart from the firstborn he wasn't happy i was pregnant he said the firstborn is enough for us that time i didn't even know that he had a child from somewhere but the child was even far older than my first son. He said, my first son is an alpha and omega. We are not going to have any more children. So the other children that I was bearing, when I get pregnant, he will ask me to terminate it. And if I don't terminate it, he will not be in talking terms with me throughout the nine months of my pregnancy. It happened with the second born, the third born. So he was scared that I could speak about the fourth one if he tells me that, i should terminate the baby because of that time where he had gotten to so he argued with me and you know to, telling me he thought i was intelligent enough why do i want to make a whole lot of babies and all that but i kept quiet but that very day that he quarreled with me at home he stood in public and said the wife was pregnant and he was happy so if you are someone who is always you know hearing from his side you might think he was happy having the baby but with me he wasn't happy and he quarreled with me so whilst i was three months into my pregnancy we traveled to the volta region to have some kind of vacation with him and us the, me and the children and his pastor the wife and the children so when we went to that holiday area he told a lot of people that we are going for you know camping to pray and all that but there was nothing like prayer that happened there then last night before we left the pastor said let us pray then he said well let's take the children to the room and come out and pray the moment we got to the room he was sleeping and I was like, no, 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 don't sleep because we need to go out and pray. Why do you want to sleep? And he was still sleeping. So I had to quickly come outside and ask the pastor if, what time are we going to pray? Because he wants to sleep. When I came out from my room, I had already switched on the light in our balcony, but the light in the pastor's balcony was off. So when I went to knock the door, by the time the wife opened the door, I didn't know from anywhere a flying object came to just hit my face and go. So by the time the wife opened the door, I was holding my you no, know, my face like this. I said, like, "Oh, mama." So I said it. I was speaking in tree, mama. Abu be abu masum. Then she said, "Abu, abu wasum sing." I said, "I don't even know because the place is dark. All that I saw was something hit my face and flew off." So I asked, "When are we going to pray?" Because he wants to sleep. So, oh, even Papa is sleeping. So, oh, is that so? Then I had to return. I got to the room and he said, I'm stubborn. You know, I'm stubborn. What I was looking for, I've gotten it. And I was like, so is it a crime for me to go and ask the time that we are going to pray? Anyway, throughout that night, I never slept. I felt pains and heaviness at my lower abdomen. As if I had not had that feeling before. So I couldn't sleep throughout the night. At dawn, when we were about to leave, he got into the car and he was like scratching my belly and throwing it away from his car window, scratching my belly and throwing it away. And he was saying something with his mouth, like praying. After that, he said, um, the, the, the flying object that hit my face was not normal. Uh, it was like a spirit that wanted me to miscarry. I was like, yeah, I couldn't even sleep throughout the night. But I didn't know what he was doing by scratching, whether he was removing the baby by himself or he was just trying to remove the poison in my tummy. But when we got home, lo and behold, I was bleeding. So I was like, hey, 
truly I am bleeding. That means the, the baby is coming out. So I got scared and I started crying. He laughed at me and said that the friend, the lady friend who is giving him money, he mentioned her name, said that she has caused that and she wanted it to be like, they will carry me away and cut my belly, you know, anyhow to remove the baby. So I, my heart jumped and I was like, hey, then the woman is very evil. How can she do such a thing? And he told me, I am rather evil. I should go and apologize to her. I said, apologize to her for what? For me to tell her to stay away from my family? So that yes, because she has spoken and, you know, it has... I was like, really? So if you have a female friend, that a female friend is trying to make your wife miscarry, if she is really a, an ordinary female friend, I'm sure you warn the woman that... Why do you have to let my wife go through this? Is it all because you are giving me money or you are supporting me financially? But for you to be one with that woman, I saw I wasn't safe. So that means they have teamed up against me and I have been left without anybody to speak for me. And nobody saw anything wrong with what he was doing. So I told my family members that then I need to travel because it looks like I'm not safe here. The evil eyes around me are a lot. So my family members spoke to him that they should allow me. That time, I wanted to go and come back. Said that, oh, allow her to go. I'm just going to spend six months and come back. By the time I come back, I have already delivered. And at least, you no, know, I will, I will be able to save myself and save my baby. You know, after that time, it was still going on and on and on and on. And finally, the woman had to give because she sent him to come and tell him that if I'm not going to allow her to give him money, then I should leave the house that we are living in because she gave him money to rent the place. Meanwhile, she wasn't the one, but the money that she gave to him was for a different purpose, but she thought it was for the house. So I said, okay, really, if that is the case, then <laughs> it is her own problem because the money that she gave to you wasn't for the house. Then she had to give him money to rent a place. So he sat us down and said that he's leaving the house. He's leaving me and the children so that he can rent his own place and have his peace of mind because i'm not giving him peace I spoke to my family members to help me travel because the person that i'm living with is now leaving me and my children at home i don't know what i'll be doing here when they saw me on video call they were like why am i looking like an old woman because of marriage i said i don't have a peace of mind in my home so it's like they saw that i was really going through a lot and that time my grandfather said no if Adra does not come she will die we need to take her from there. And truly, he rented the place and asked me and my children to sleep outside. Just to punish me for not agreeing him to, you know, collect money from the woman. Before I left my work, I had visa in my passport. But it wasn't my intention to travel. If I wanted to travel, I would have traveled with it. But it was far from my mind. It was after we were going through all those problems. And I saw that, no... It is not well with me. Even when the, husband, the, the, the the lady's boyfriend left, he also left home and said that until I call the man to come back, he's also not coming home. So he left the house and slept with a friend for three days with my firstborn. And after the third day and I called him, oh, please come home. What are you doing? Because the children are also missing their brother and you too, you are being missed at home. So he told me where he was staying. I got there and my passports were with him. My passport and the children's passport were with him. So I was like, why are you even keeping my passport? So it's like, you are treating me unfairly and you are still keeping my passport. It's like, I didn't give it to him. He just took it by himself. So it's like, you are not treating me well to be happy in the marriage. Yet you are seizing me the only thing that can give me freedom. So it's like, you don't want the person, yet you want the person to suffer. So it was like, I was not safe. I felt like nobody is telling me to leave. But the person that I'm living with, everything that he's showing means that he wants me to leave. I was just trying to leave for him to come to his senses that what is going on, it was too much for me. But after I left, he said he doesn't need me there anymore. I shouldn't come back. People were trying to speak to him. That, oh, let's call her to come back. After all, every marriage there, he should say, no, he doesn't need me there. I am wicked. I am this and that and that. And so that is why I stayed in, in Takradi for one month, thinking things would turn around, but it didn't. 
traveling to abroad, I was still hoping that things would work out between us. And even he was saying that, yeah, he wants us to come back. So he, should, he was going to quickly complete the building for us to come. The moment he completed the building, he said, I should write a letter before I can come back. If I don't write a letter stating in the letter that I am coming on my own merits, if anything is to happen to me, it's my own problem. I should count him out. That is when I said, oh, so I never knew that my leaving was a blessing because for my husband to tell me to write a letter before I come to my matrimonial upon all that you did to me, that means I wasn't truly safe there and I'm not even going to be safe if I come back. So then let me stay here and concentrate on my children. I see my life today and I feel like everything that was going on was for my own good because now I'm better off. Throughout the time that I was married, there was nothing like a single joy. The only joy that I had was when I was helping him do something and he will praise me and he will be all over me for me to be happy. That was the only joy that I had. But the real joy, I never got it. Someone treating you well, like I want my wife and I'm happy that I have my wife. No. So it was obvious that the person did not come because of me. It came because of what I had. And when I was asking him to stop collecting money from the woman, he said, if he doesn't collect money from her, where is he going to get the money from? So it looks like that is his main aim. Someone might think, oh, you are a strong woman. I thank God that he gave me the strength. I don't even know how I got that strength from. But at the end of the day, it is worth it. And I also use myself to encourage others out there that no matter what you are going through, hold on fast. Have a clean mind and a clean heart. God will just guide you and take you through. I don't encourage abuse and I'm not in support of abuse, especially those who abuse women or the women who abuse men and come out and act like the victim because you have no way to you know, explain yourself because they have already created the, the impression that you are the one causing them pain and nobody will believe you. God will continue to be your guide if you trust him. And I know that whatever that you are going through i am there 24 7 to listen to you to support you so that abuse will be even not eradicated completely reduced to its minimum level thank you for watching me until i come your way again next time it's bye bye